<laughs> Can't really stand it. Just gotta wait for Seth, I guess. So. Good evening, sir. Yeah, we're waiting just for you. <laughs> and the local scribe. And the <laughs> <laughs> there he is. There he is. Waiting. Really? Still. I see you here. Well done, sir. Well done. <laughs> <coughs> Is that the naughty chair? <laughs> I know it was pulled aside. Oh, almost a corner chair. chair. Oh, the thing. <laughs> I don't know if it's not the naughty chair, the thing chair. Yeah. His mother used to set me in the corner and watch me watch. Okay, we'll call to order the regular meeting of the Tracy City Council for May 14th. Um, stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We stand for the invocation. Join me in a word of prayer. Lord God, we again pray that you guide us in all that is spoken here in this place. Give us wisdom to when to hold our tongues and when to speak. And we also pray some special prayers for the committee interviewing new candidates for our administrator and for all those who will be approving whoever that is. And in all proceedings tonight, give us wisdom and guidance. These things we pray in your name. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> Get approval for the minutes for the April 23rd meeting. Any corrections? Got one typo on the second page, second paragraph, second line. Um, for, for the EDA's address, the CEBG should be CDBG. Yep. That's the only thing I found. I'd move approval as amended. Second. We have a first and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Do we have approval of the agenda as is written? I don't have any additions. Nothing? Make that motion. I'll second it. First and second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Does anybody have any conflicts of interest for this meeting tonight? Seeing none. Anybody from the public that would like to talk about something that is not on the agenda? Hearing none, we can't. We're going to skip the public hearing until 6.45. Um, reports? Are you doing the feasibility study report? No? Is Chris coming? He's supposed to be. Okay, well, we'll wait for him for that. Wait for him. Any, what about the liquor store update? There's a... Back down here. There we go. There's some updates that was discussed in the liquor committee uh, meeting. We asked that she uh, provide some more updates, um, keep the council informed of what's going on in the liquor store. Um, so included in that, you'll have your profit and loss. Um, it's doing much better than it did last year, but obviously it's still on the wrong side of the zero um, to date. Um, they will have a, Rall Brothers will be doing um, samples from 4.30 to 6. Um, they already did that. Or that already did that last week. <laughs> um, and then the expo, they did have $189 in sales. Really, it was a wash compared to the expenses that was used at the uh, at the expo so I guess it'd be good adver advertisement if anything um, they've been working on the computer 
system over there. Um, I know Dave's been over there helping Sandy out along with um, Minnesota Municipal Beverage Association. Um, try to get things up to snuff with our inventory and what we actually have and what we need to order moving forward. So that was pretty much the gist of it. Where we're at now. I just want to point out that yes, we are still year to date, a little over three thousand dollars at a loss. But last year at this time we were over twenty one thousand loss. So really we have turned around. I mean that's a little over eighteen thousand dollars that we haven't lost, if that makes sense. So I do see things turning around at the liquor store and so I think Sandy's doing a good job with the committee and that at looking at ways to improve, keep the expenses down, improve the revenue. The most we can say is, boy, we just encourage people to please shop local. We say that with all our businesses. We need people to shop local to keep the businesses open here. Might have to pay a little bit more, but the convenience of having not just a liquor store, but other businesses in town might need to pay a little bit more for that convenience. So that's my soapbox for this part of the meeting. <laughs> I won't promise there's no more. But. I think it's definitely a positive that we're giving better. You know, we knew it wasn't going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. So in one quarter, I think improving 18,000 is That's a is big quite step a in the right direction. It really is. Okay. <coughs> Do we want to go on to the Monroe Township Real Water Real Water? <laughs> I just paid my real water bill today. <laughs> the Monroe Township Rural Fire Contract Matt, can you touch on that? Yeah, I can address that. Um, as indicated in the packet, Monroe Township returned the fire agreement that we had sent to them with the proposed raise that the city came up with. They had, they crossed theirs out and put in a lower amount. So it's up to the city whether they want to accept that amount or not. That's different from all the other townships in which the city has fire agreements with. It would be a lower rate. My concern is that if you enter into that agreement with the lower rate with my little township, the other townships may come back and try to negotiate the same rate, if not lower. And every time you'll be doing piecemeal with each township instead of a flat, consistent rate. That's why I would advise to maintain the current uh, number that you guys have proposed originally. If you don't come to an agreement and sign that, um, you still can respond to fires in Monroe Township. Um, however, then you're going to have to build them on an individual rate based upon the city's uh, fire call. I think it's $750 per call, depending upon the length of time that they're there. Um, in reviewing the city code, in order to enforce that better, um, the city needs to pass the ordinance that I've included in the packet. Um, without that, you're not authorized to certify delinquent charges upon their property taxes. Um, then you're just simply trying to track down a debt. <coughs> Without that ordinance, you can't uh, seek that mechanism. So I would advise the council, I don't, I, I have to have a public hearing to adopt that ordinance, but to pass that ordinance regardless, because that authorizes the city to use those mechanisms to recoup payment in the event that the property owner doesn't pay for the fire services. So regardless, I'd advise the city to place it on at a later date for public hearing to approve that ordinance. And then in relation to the agreement, it's up to the city whether they want to accept that lower amount, but the contract is the same as all our townships. Uh, the language is appropriate. It's just depending upon what the city wants to do with that new rate that Monroe Township has proposed unilaterally. You know, I went back and I read the minutes from when we first approved this and everything. And I guess the one thing I'm wondering is, did anybody from Monroe Township, because I couldn't read the signature or anything on the letter, so I don't even know who the electors are of Monroe Township to try to even contact. But did they try to contact the city to discuss the rate? Because that's the one thing we had said, if people have concerns or questions, 
to please bring them forward. Did we get anything from them? No. Not that I've heard anyway. I don't think anyone in the office has been yeah. in contact with anybody either. I guess I think it's pretty point point forward here. I mean, between the attorney saying <laughs> his recommendations, what we said during that is, you know, this is an across the board agreement. If anything, they've been given of all the townships that have an agreement with us, got a break for a year because of a miscommunication with turnover of administration and stuff like that. We as a council decided not to jump up all the way that 30 some percent of an increase because of an error on our side. So we extended the contract out in an additional year to get up to the dollar amount we said we needed. So I think we've done due diligence to try to be fair. I guess I would hate to lose them from using our fire services. And I think the people in that township would not be better for losing it because we are obviously the closest fire department to a lot of that township. We have an excellent fire service here, so I don't know why they wouldn't want to utilize us. They did due diligence at setting the scale back in 2012. You know, like they said in their letter about that it was a recommendation from the League of Minnesota Cities and the Township Association. They did adjust the formula a little bit. They didn't go with the strict um, formula. They adjusted it. The, count, the Lyon County Fire Departments got together, decided where they're going to cap it. I really think everyone has done their due diligence. And so my recommendation, long story short, and I'll sh shorten it, is we stay with the schedule that was agreed upon. We return their check that they sent us with the understanding they either sign for the amount that the rest of the township signed for, or it's open to them to go to a different service. I don't want to have a different agreement per township. It's across the board. This is what's going to cost for our services. We have a, a resolution stating our per section rate for this calendar year, right? Sure. Did we set? I, I think it was said we would do a resolution the following meeting, which I don't think we did do that I could see in the minutes. Okay. We made the motion, and it was accepted what the schedule rate was going right. to be, yep. that that rate would be told to the townships, and that would be the agreement they would sign. Okay. But we did not then make a resolution. That's where my confusion was. The resolution going forward, that was how to handle it on out to get us up to speed. And we were going to do that after the contracts came in. Right. So we set the section rate by council vote, with a unanimous council vote on the section rate, and yes. sent out the contracts. Yes. So I'd agree with what you're saying, and I would I'd make a motion to what you said as far as you returning the check. You want to shorten that motion, you can. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'd, I'd return their check and, and tell them to, until such time they're not under a contract of fire program with the city of Tracy, and they will be billed accordingly. Because there's still a, um, in our fee schedule, there's still the billing for mutual aid at a, at a set rate and a vehicle rate, an hourly rate, and a minimum scale. So you've got something to go by. And, I, and I, we need to work on the ordinance that you were talking about. So if, we, if this comes up again, we've got a way to bill it and, Correct. and keep it. But if, I'd make a motion to return their check and let them know they're not currently under contract for Tracy's fire service for their coverage. And to reject their counter offer. And reject their offer. It's it's the way we wrote it. It's just fair to everybody else. Yeah. And then if the city obviously doesn't agree to those terms, then they're not obligated to respond to any fires. They can choose to do so. And if they do, then they can bill them at the rate right. included in the uh, fee schedule. There was this. Which would be a higher rate. Because right. Because we don't want it to be to their benefit not to sign a contract. It's going to have to be a much higher rate, and that's in our fee yeah, schedule. Whichever the fee schedule. Okay. Yes. There was the only contact. Um, I know she had mentioned that Dale um, had contacted him, but it was nothing to do with the the, the fees with that. Um, the only thing 
it was was means we annexed in the extra area that we talked about a reduction in coverage because we took over some sections um, or partials or you know from the annexation of the of the lagoons right. and and with the uh, red rooster coming up and that part would be adjusted site. on their section fees yes. yeah so that was the only discussion according to what Dale had told me that was had there so <clears throat> I just wanted to throw that in there so, so we, we got a motion and a second any discussion all those in favor aye opposed aye. motion carries oh just just a, a comment not on the oh I'm sorry just a comment for your attorney um, I'm Dave Spencer by the way I went across the hall for 35 years one of the problems we had back then too and I know it's allowed by law too with your assessing the property owners is uh, to give you an example is well I'll rem I remember the case somebody came through from Brainerd had a car fire out here and everything went in a garbage a towing bill and everything else and this guy left and he never paid for the fire that assessment uh, or that state state law allows them to cross county lines with that assessment and charge that guy if you can get his property number or his uh, parcel number in in you have, you have to have to do that. yes that's right so that would be um, a motion we need to make separate right. correct thank you Oh, we'll back to our public new hearing. business, right? What, what he's talking about? We'll put our new we business. We just put our yeah. new business? Yeah. Okay. Okay, at this time, we will go to the public hearing for the correction to the annexation of the Red Rooster parcel now owned by TCD. Anybody here to talk about that? Hearing none, can we just close that? And then do we have anybody that wants to talk about the State Street surface improvement? It's not that until 7. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Chris, would you like to do yours then? Yeah. So, sorry, uh, I was late. I was actually anticipating that I would give my spiel about State Street at 7, so I can do it now. Um, do you want to wait and do yours at 7? Well, I think maybe the intent for the 7... You know, now that I think it was, about it, is, is for the residents to speak. To. Yeah, but I can present the feasibility study to council okay. now. Um, so, like we talked about uh, last time, um, to go through the uh, statute 429 process for the State Street improvements, we prepared a feasibility study. Um, I, did that get into the packet? So it's just a quick, you know, it's a one block thing. So it's a a real brief um, overview of what needs to be done. Um, the only utilities within that corridor, um, there's a storm sewer line, but that's relatively new, concrete, good shape. There's no sewer water, um, so the improvements would be limited to uh, the street section. And what we're proposing to do is have, uh, when Dunnick is in town, to finish up some of their phase one work and the fifth street um, east extension. And I believe they're resurfacing the EDA lot, which is directly adjacent to this segment. Um, they could complete this work so they pro provided some proposed pricing um, almost all of which is under unit prices that were competitively bid as part of the phase one project so we spoke with the city attorney and he um, feels that meets the requirements of being competitively bid um, and we probably got better unit prices because it was such a large scale project versus a small one um, so the total project cost is estimated to be um, 65,000 and then we um, calculated the um, potential assessments based on the city uh, assessment policy um, and then the asterisks here just to note that three there are four properties that front this segment and three of them would be classified as corner lots so that that's what those asterisks mean they basically their footage gets reduced um, their accessible footage gets reduced so that table on the second page indicates what their assessments would be if we 
um, followed the current policy. Um, so tonight, if, if we want to move forward, um, you would pass the resolution receiving this feasibility study and then pass the resolution ordering the improvement and approving change order number nine. And the wording of that resolution, since it's part of that phase one contract, RD will have, have to weigh in. So the resolution is worded contingent upon their approval. That way we won't have to come back. So once they sign off on it, um, we just get it to Shane and he can get the appropriate signatures. Um, so yeah, then they would complete that and then we can complete the, um, the rest of the 429 assessment process, which would include the assessment hearing, just get that done um, in November so it can get on the 2019 taxes. Um, the, I, I don't think I mentioned we would also propose to add um, subsurface drainage tile along the curb. And since the curb's already in place, we put it just inside. Usually it's on the back side of the curb, but we'll put it on the inside and then outlet it to the catch basins at the west end on uh, East or Third Street East, excuse me. So that should help uh, uh, lengthen the life of the road by by draining it and making it less susceptible to frost. Chris, that price, that sixty-five thousand, that was. Um if the base needed to be replaced. Yes, there. yes. That that assume that. Um, so what they're going to do is they're going to remove the the pavement, just the blacktop, um, and then we're going to do a roll test, which is the same thing we do on new construction, and we'll see if there are any soft spots. And they, I'm assuming there will be a few. They'll come back and remove and replace the base, recompact it. Um, but that sixty-five thousand assumes that the entire base will have to be removed and replaced. So obviously, we're hoping it'll be quite a bit less, but. And that is all part of your inclusion on the uh, proposed assessments. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's all based on that sixty-five thousand. Yep. So I think I hit hit everything in there. Do you have an extra copy of that? Yeah. I can. I guess there. This is here for the hearing. Usually we have like a PowerPoint presentation, PowerPoint presentation or something. There's only four properties, so I thought I'd just <laughs> print the whole report and hand that out. <coughs> oh, and the uh, we will um, thicken the section up since it's a route to the emergency room. We use the same section that we're using on Fourth Street East, and that that additional oversizing, we'll call it, that gets taken out of the assessable amount. Right. So the city pays for that extra thickness, and then the basically a typical residential street cost is what the assessments are based on. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any questions for Chris? Thanks, Chris. Yep. While we're waiting, can we move on to the approval of the rural fire department contracts? So we can approve the rest of them without. With the exception the of the rules, right? And all the rest of them are in and paid. Yep. I would make a motion to approve all the rural fire contracts that were received on time and properly paid for. I'll second. First and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, administrator search update. I just threw a memo in your packet. I most of you are aware kind of what the plan is. Um, they're looking at um, Thursday, the 17th, which would be this coming Thursday, to interview the two um, individuals that were finalists um, starting at 5 o'clock um, in the council chambers. Um, I don't know if you guys had any questions on that. That's full council, correct? Yep. Yep. And do we have a we should maybe call call a special meeting tonight though. As long as everyone's here. 
I would make a motion to con call for a special council meeting on the 17th of May, commencing at 5 p.m. to conduct interviews for the administrator's position. I'll second that. First and second, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Do you want to talk about the pigeon shoot? And Jason's not here, so I can talk about last last time we did the pigeon shoot last year. Um, we had a, the council approve that prior to carrying out that event. Um, I don't know if you guys have any input on when we should do that, and if you approve of that, um, and I can let Jason know to move forward with the downtown pigeon reduction. If you're looking for a motion, I'd make a motion <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to allow the chief to conduct any necessary control of the pigeon population in the downtown area. So I don't know, is this something you want to keep, you want to put it on the agenda? So you guys are aware of it, or do you want me to put it in this report? Because I know he did two last year, one closer to Labor Day, like two weeks before Labor Day. Yeah. Didn't have heard but. Unless uh, unless anybody else has a problem, I think we just leave it up to his discretion. Okay. So we'll get a motion on that then. I'll we'll second move. it. <laughs> okay. First and second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, request for Scott Toma to donate pool passes for the Tracy Tornado Anniversary Silent Auction. You say how many? I think you said it was to our discretion if we wanted to do a daily pass, season pass, right. whatever we wanted to. I know on the other requests we had were just daily passes. Um, Council, if they want to. <laughs> what is a season pass? 135 or 155 or something like that. Something like that. There is a tempt here as a fundraiser. Do we still have those punch cards for however yep. many passes? And for $40, I yeah, think. So. I would I almost know. rather see us donate one of the punch cards or two or punch cards or whatever. I would, yeah, that's. I mean, a daily pass, I, I'd like us to do a little bit more than the daily pass. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking those punch cards, that way whoever bids on them knows they can spread it however they want throughout the summer or whatever. I'd agree with that. Well, yeah, because it's, I mean, people lost their lives in those tornado things, so it's kind of nice to remember them by a little something. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Who, do, who get um, benefits from this? Where does the money go? To a scholarship fund out at the high school. It's going to okay. be named in honor of the people that lost their lives. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I say we donate two. I'll second that. First and second, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, seven, is this close enough to seven? Or you want to do one more? Probably do the we can do the dance, dance permit. permit. Okay. So we'll do Bonnie and Clyde's request for a temporary dance permit. I'll make that. A second. Okay. First and second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Are we close? 6.59. <laughs> I think by one. the time you open it. <laughs> we get the next one, it take us a little longer. So we will call for the public hearing for the State Street Surface Improvement. Is somebody here to talk about that tonight? Yes, I'm the only one here, the way I voted. Okay. Um, Bring up your posse. 
first of all, excuse the nerdy look here, but I just had new lenses put in my eyes, and so I'm waiting for my new prescriptions yet. So, <laughs> um, anyway, um, I was the one who came in and talked to Shane about getting something done there, and it's long overdue, and I want to thank you for going forward with it, because it was supposed to be done, what was it, 12 years ago, Tony? About the time we put the kiboshes on it. Yeah, the and uh, well, when they wanted to dig up the whole road, which was kind of stupid to ruin a nine-ton base in my mind, and I was here. But anyway, that's water over the dam. Uh, just one thing that caught my attention this morning, you were talking about putting drainage in on both sides of the curb? No, just the inside. On the inside, so the, the, the my side, side yeah. The, oh, the, oh the, the street side. Okay. Yeah, uh, both sides of the street, both right. sides of each curb. Yeah. Okay, because I'm right in the middle of doing some oh. la landscaping, so. Okay. <laughs> That'll help you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but anyway, uh, just want to thank you for doing it and looking at the cost from compared to what it was 12 years ago. You won't get a bit of an argument from me. I don't know about the rest of them. Of course, two of them. I think are about a mile south in some real estate south of town. But <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Charter change recommendation. Oh, they close the hearing. Yeah. Oh. There's no one else. Oh wait, Rosemary, I got to close the hearing first. Oh, uh, okay. Close the public hearing. <coughs> okay, Rosemary. Sorry. Wait, no, no. <laughs> You have your in your packet the proposed changes. All the changes in one or separated into two separate changes. Is there any questions concerning that? I do have a couple questions. Okay. Um, one, in the minutes from before, you had said that you were going to bring all recommendations at once. Is no. this all? No. All recommendations will be done at the end of the year, so it's one legal fee. This is one that needs to be done immediately. And then that will also be finalized at the end of the year because then there's the publications and all the rest of it that goes with it. Because it's because there's uh, you have to notify in the paper, you have to do all the printing, so you don't want to piecemeal it. You want to do it all at once. But this one we're bringing to you now because we want it to be able to move forward. Okay. Um, of the election or correct whatever. okay the other question I have is I'm going to use myself as an example okay when you said that we could do three consecutive terms to equal 12 years correct okay so I've been appointed one year mm -hmm. would I only be able to run for two terms because if I ran for a third term it would put me at 13 Teen. years right it's 12 total so I would not be able to run for a third term. As it's written now. 12 years as indicated. So it would be the total term of serving, not separate, the length of terms. Length of, the length of service instead of the number of terms. That's the length of and, and we really struggled with that. <coughs> well, I know, because yeah. I was myself sitting here right. thinking how we could use the verbiage differently, that if it was three consecutive terms or until the third elected term was completed. You know, I'm not saying no. you're going to have to live there with was me for that long. I mean, I would have to run oh, and be told. No, nobody's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and, and that's why it's, it's separated out, because um, you could approve just one part of it, or you can, it's written as the total in the first. And the second one is just the term limits or just the increasing the size of the council. And we really struggled with that ourselves, but finally unanimously came up with this. On, on the term limits, is there any better word picture that we could put in there? Um, I know it was used in the past. Well, I was a, I was on the, as a council, and then I went to the mayor, and then my clock restarted because I changed seats. That is, is there any way we can make it clear in there? I mean, this is clear to me, but I'm for the next people coming down the road that changing seats does not make your 12, 12 year clock reset. It's, you're the way it's member. written now, the clock is not reset. And it, 
if you read the, it was interpreted as such, but that was not. The attorney true. interpreted it that yes, way, right? Yeah, right. Well, that's why I want to have <laughs> clear as much. <laughs> And the way that the Charter Commission operates to affect the amendment, they're proceeding with their recommendation to the City Council. Right. Um, and now the City Council has to hold a public hearing on the proposal. Right. And then they have a, a month between two to four weeks after the public hearing to vote on these three proposals. Right. So you can vote on any one of them or all of them but the vote has to be unanimous by the city council for it to pass. And then place on the election for a vote by the, the voters. But the other thing I should tell you is, is that the charter stands clear on how they feel about this. So if it does not pass unanimously, they are going to take it to a petition. So we're prepared to move forward with that. So you're telling me uh, charter commission that is appointed by the mayor and the right. council right. has more authority than the council themselves we're asking that elected? we're asking that that move forward to a vote we want it to be on the ballot because we feel like the voters should be the but ones you're that more make or less saying you're going to go over the head of the council we're going to, that was kind of unanimous yeah that was Let's one of the options in, that was getting in yep. long term yeah one of the you can change, a, amend a charter by three different ways. One is by petition Sin. of the voters. Right. Um, amendment by the council itself, passing ordinance or proposal by the charter commission to the city council, and the city council has to ask to vote on that. So there's three different ways. Right. Um, the petition has to be done by at least 5% of the eligible voters. Right. So um, the charter commission itself doesn't petition, it's the voters right. that would bring the petition. So, right. Um, Yes and no. Yeah, yeah, yes and no, but there well, would be enough people as because voters. Because I'm so fiscally conservative, let me ask you this. Which is the cheapest way of getting this thing changed then? Letting the Charter Commission run and out and collect signatures for the petition? Because then it shouldn't require a public hearing. It shouldn't require anything. Just get on the ballot and then let the people decide. And we don't have to make any publications other than what they put in the paper when they're talking about it as they go out and get their petitions. And That's correct. Um, I'm all for okay. Then my next question is, <laughs> absolutely. My next question is, is then do we uh, separate it out into three different, uh, two different petition, three different things to be voted on, or the petition can be based upon whatever the petitioners want to include to amend right. the chart. Right. And those would be if you proceed with the way that it's written right now. Right. Um, it would be three separate questions. Right, for election. the voters. Well, All right. The three. One is the number of council people. Yep. One would be the term, term limits. And then one is both of them. All of them combined. Oh, if it's, it's combined. all combined. Yeah. Mayor. Oh, right. Okay. I was thinking that was a yep. package. Would that be based upon the voters to include that in the petition and what they wanted to amend? If, if you proceeded with the petition. Petition, the right. proceeded with the petition. Um, otherwise, um, the Charter Commission has presented its recommendation, so the council have, does have to follow the procedures going forward with holding a public hearing on those three recommendations as have been presented to us. Unless I want to go back to Tony's question. If we just go ahead and decide to petition it, then yep. we for um, and, and what you might want to do if that's what you think is best is just you can withdraw your recommendation before the public hearing. Wait, you have to you know, provide notice for the public hearing, so. Mm. If, if the council it. makes a motion not to accept the recommendation, we don't have to go through the public hearing, do you? You do. Yep. The statute doesn't okay. provide the council any uh, authority to reject it. It says within one month of receiving a recommendation to amend the charter, the city must publish notice for a public hearing. Okay. Even if she retracts it? Not if she retracts it. Not if I retract it. Upon passage by the charter, you have to go back to the charter commission. No, no, they were very clear about that. It's going to get, then we get a petition of was it 35 signatures? I think it was 130. Is the five percent? No, it's no, that no, that was 20 no, percent. Okay, okay. 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 registered voters. Of registered voters, so we need. 
Around 35 is all. Yeah. Are we going registered voters or? No, they have to be registered and they have to be, they have to be registered in the city and they have to be able to vote. They had to vote it in the last election. They had to have yeah. voted. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. So that would take us to the, to the ballot, that would take us right to the ballot. Correct. So it'd be roughly 52 people based on I mean, I don't know what the registered voter count is, but roughly based on what it was on the recall election, that's just 52. So. Five percent of total votes cast at the last previous state general election. At the last state general election, which was so if 130 was good then. So if we're, we're going with the same number that we needed for the recall election. So it's one fourth of one thirty because it was twenty percent. Yeah. yeah. So that's where I came up with the number. I, I was mistaken. Yeah, it's uh, thirty-three, thirty-three, thirty-four. I'll be honest. I'm a little torn here because right. I don't know if that's the professional means we want to go through of getting something on the ballot that it appears they have to get a petition signed to get something to get to the voters i don't know if that's the message i want sent to not just our community but the neighboring communities and mm -hmm. such because we are trying to work exactly. all together here so I agree it might be the cheapest way to go, but I don't know if it's the most professional way to go. Okay. So, that being said, now um, we need a public hearing no matter if we agree to it or not. Correct. The city's required to, after the recommendations been proposed by the Charter Commission, which it has tonight. Right. So we, you just need to set uh, a pub notice of a public hearing on the proposal. So those three items at the Charter Commission. Okay, proposed. and that would probably give people from the community more say in that also? Yeah, within yeah. a month from the that public hearing has to occur. I want to add something. We have nine members on our Charter Commission, okay? We unanimously voted for this, mm -hmm. every one of us. And we all said, every one of us said, we can get 10 people to petition to sign for this because we really need more diversity on our city council. We really want this for our city to move forward to have more input, everybody. For better representation, you for bet. more diversity, and encourage more interest in running for the city government, for city council, getting more people involved. And I totally understand where you right. guys are coming from. I'm just my main thing is is we need to get it to the people exactly because yeah. your nine people might feel that way and there might be nine people over here that feel very strongly about <coughs> only having the four because that's what was passed the last right. vote In so 2011. i understand your guys's commitment but there's right. also this facet of people that can be committed just as committed the opposite right. direction that's why it needs to go to the voters right so i'm fine with it going to the voters my main thing is is to see if we could do something with the, the verbiage of the 12 years. Yes. Like for the example of me, that yes. I can either do nine years or then after my nine, I can't run another time. Same with Pooh. You right. couldn't either. You know, anyone, because you're going to discourage people to maybe be appointed because you just took four, term, four years away from me to serve right. one year. Right. So, can it say so, a Matt, maybe it could be elected. Yeah, that, elected. Yes, elected. That, we that was because elected. appoint. They weren't elected. They were appointed. Correct. So does that not? We should say twelve elected years. That should satisfy that concern. Right. Okay. So I can do see. We that. need to bring a new recommendation back to the council, or we're going to wordsmith it after the fact. And I think it needs to be wordsmith. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, we need to revise the recommendation. 
Okay, but then is that not is that giving us the amount of time we need to get it on the ballot? Get it on the ballot. with me, man. <laughs> Council can uh, basically approve it contingent upon the commission revising the language as discussed tonight. To okay. It, uh, yeah. You know, on a town matter. All righty, because we're meeting on Wednesday. Yeah. We can do that. And then we could have it back for the Tuesday after Memorial Day and then move forward with it from there. Because yeah. the council has up to a month to publish notice okay. of the public hearing, so it gives you some time. All righty. So basically just maybe withdraw it or contingent upon the revision at your next meeting. Okay. And then bring that to the next council meeting. Okay. And then we can the sure do that. Council can include that revised proposed amendments and then place that in the public meeting. Okay. And we weren't trying to go over anybody's head or anything. We were just, this is, this was. <laughs> it's just how it was coming across. Right, okay, sorry it, about that. That was certainly not the intention. my response to it. Okay, so that's fine. I'm not saying that the rest of the council felt the same way. No, that's no. My response. But that's the answer to it. And it was, you know, to get this whole room of people to unanimously vote on something is uh, amazing in itself. So. Well, and the contingency we, that Matt uh, offered would definitely be a resolution because we are meeting Wednesday morning at 10 and right. that way we could get it right back to you and if it's on a contingency then you could still do the public hearing and everything if it's um, approved there wouldn't be any hold up in time correct correct, correct. Um, and and the hold up with it if I am understanding it completely is we want 12 elected years instead of 12 consecutive years is that correct consecutive elected, elected years okay all right if you can when you come up with your final draft maybe send that to me and I can maybe approve that about noon on Wednesday would that be fine sure <laughs> does it have to really go through you and all they're doing is adding a word to it well it's a well I don't know I think that's a good safeguard It'll just take the sentence or the sentence Well, okay. if, if we're going to come back with a second recommendation, then this is just, I'm throwing it out there for you guys to consider. Right. A ballot initiative, it would be simpler if you just had your last two, they're up to the six, and then the, instead of trying to lump it all into one, that's like you said, I have all three on the ballot. That would just confuse the voters. If you would just have the city council be up to six and the 12 years elected instead That's of trying to combine consecutive, them. 12 consecutive right. elected yeah. years. But that instead of giving them three options, just yeah. give them the two. Okay. Is there going to be yes or no initiatives anyway? That is very true. And that would. Okay. That gives the voter the option of, well, I'll well, keep a smaller council and go with the term limits or. I'll go with the term limits, or not go with the term limits, or go with larger, whatever. But it gives them that choice. So. Okay, you're saying, but am I hearing you, you want it lumped into one, or you want no, the no, two? Okay. Get rid of the lumped in one. You're very. I just do the two. Okay. Do the, other, the bottom two. That would be my recommendation. So. Yeah, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. So, do we need? Uh, you don't need to take any action at this point. Okay. okay, then we have 324 South Street offered to mow North End in exchange of use, using it for parking. <laughs> you could just I could just let it. Introduce okay. yourself. <laughs> My name is Rosemary Martin. I'm a resident of Tracy, Minnesota, and I own 324 South Street. As it exists now, one spot at the end of that is already parking spot for a tenant there. The reason why I'm requesting for two is not for the summer, but in the winter, that we would make sure that residents would be off of the street at, for any snow emergencies and there is a place for them to go for off street. And that back lot needs a lot of attention, so it doesn't make sense for me just to reseed and do my part, but to get out there and reseed the whole thing and mow it, make it look nice. 
So would you ever consider just purchasing that parcel of land if it could be sold to you? I, I told Shane I considered buying the whole thing, but then we'll just start with the parcel of land. <laughs> So I had somebody call me today. Yes. And concerned about the fact of, like, if they were concerned about the fact that if you're going to swap it for mowing, that they right. didn't like that. Right. They weren't opposed with you just parking there. Right. You know, for the snow part of it. But then I want to be able to put signs up that say, that say this is private parking. And I can't really do that if there's any, any kind of an agreement in place or... Can I or can't really do that on public land either. Not on public. This is all city owned property. Okay. So I mean right now they kinda use it for parking every every way back there really. I mean when John's is open they park there and right. I was gonna say they park there all the time. Yep. The last twenty years at least. Right. Or forty, actually. Yeah. Anyway, I went around and talked to my neighbors. None of the neighbors have any issue with this. I just wanted to be able to have something that says in the winter time, because in the summertime it doesn't make any difference, but in the winter they have to get off the, the street for snow removal. So that was the reason why. You don't have any room, Rosemary, in, in, in the country view over there for them to park for, during snow removal? I don't know that I would ask somebody to walk that far. There's already one place there. I can ask them to double up and still be okay because I own that strip of property all the way up there. But, and is there room for two? Yeah, there is room for two at the end. I'm just saying if we have snow like we did this year, they can just park on the end. That can be designated for them. And um, there'd be no worry about them not being able to get in off of the street. Well, I mean, on your property, there's not room for two. Yeah, if they do front you know, two in a row, there's room all the way, actually there's room all the way up to the building if they want to do that. But you'd rather not have your tenants have to do that. Right. I guess I don't, I'm not sure how I feel as far as opening this and setting it as a precedence. Right. Someone saying we'll trade you this for this. Well, right. Anybody that gets to know me knows I mm -hmm. really am concerned about setting a precedence because once I say something, then I want to follow that through. And I'm concerned about the precedence this would sign or would set. Right. That I was just wondering if it would be an option if we looked into if it's something that the city would be willing to sell her parcel that that parcel or that I would certainly it. be willing to do. That would not be a problem at I mean, all. Then it would be cut and dry. Right. Right. Her, her property, she paid for it, and it's, right. she go back on whatever, the tax rolls, whatever that she would can be. She put whatever sign she wants up there. I like that option the best. I mean, who would we need to talk to about the possibility of purchasing? How did we do that when I bought that little strip behind Country View? That was... Uh, didn't Mike just put together a proposal and then you guys well, approved the cost, it? They had to get the legal description. Shin right. And, uh, if it's platted. It's platted. Okay. The legal description pretty easy. Yeah. Right. And then just a quick claim deed. Right. That's what they did. And approve and an agreed upon price. Yeah. I like that option better. Yep. But right now the parcel for the um, liquor store. The patio for the liquor store runs from South Street. Pretty much all the way back, there's a power pole mm -hmm. right on the corner there. That's it's just that narrow strip about mm -hmm. 20, 25 foot wide. <laughs> exactly 25 foot, which is probably what the building was because I think everything downtown is 25 foot lots. So, mm -hmm. you know, so it'd be just a matter of where, you know, if you were to sell it, you know, where you'd want the split at, you know, because I don't know if we want access yet. You know, next to the liquor store to access the patio lot, or you know, you might want to leave something there. Yeah, for I was gonna say some kind of a yeah, so that people it isn't just the sidewalk. Yeah, maybe a ten foot buffer or a five foot buffer or whatever. I'm still gonna mow it, but anyway. Could we um, leave that in your hands, administrator? For I guess I'd be? I'd like a recommendation on what you 
Well, my question is, before you get the recommendation, how is that going to affect your snow removal through there, and then who's going to pay for that snow removal through there? Because as you start eliminating city land, where are you going to push it? And well, right now, everything from the liquor store, we push to the southwest. Right. Yep. Over in that corner. Um, we don't really pile anything there because everybody's parked there all the time anyway. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so right now, from the back, say the lot line of the alley to the sidewalk is about 80 feet. And that's right up to the sidewalk. Right. And you push that out to Front Street anyway, or South Street rather. Everything from there, it either gets pushed, you know, sometimes we'll turn around, we'll put it in the liquor store, right. sometimes, most of the time, most of that snow from the alley south to South Street, we push out to South Street. South Street. And you take care of the public or the private parking behind them buildings too when you go through there? We'll take care of some of that. Um, there's actually a, an alley easement through there that I found that conflicts with the county's right. platting. So I guess we've always done that on the lots behind there. Um, as far as what's private and what's not. We really know. We would we would have our own snow removed, Tony. Well, I, I mean, Kendall would just come and push that. it, just keep pushing it up because there's plenty of room to go south with ours. Well, what if we split it? Did like twelve and a half feet split that long lot? That would give you twelve and a half feet, which would be adequate for a car. To park plus you could do multiple vehicles back okay or are you wanting parking I was just gonna park this on. way okay there's a room for two right at the end and that the reason why I was pursuing that was because this winter was horrible mm -hmm. so um, it would give right at the end they'd be off the street they could still get to their apartment and the street crew can get through without any problems different in the snow removal at all. Just no. It just would be different for me. Yeah. I would have I would have being pushed. You would have that right. area. I'll throw this up on the screen so you kind of know what's there. But so <coughs> maybe So there's kind of how it lays now. Um, it's always been kind of when Doc was there, and, and so I don't know if you'd split it like right here. No, I'm just talking about this end piece here is all I'm wanting to use for their parking. Right here, these two places. One you want to go closer to the to same the, places where John's used to park? No, the that's back on that car. Because this here is part of your lot. I can't see. Why am I? Oh, yeah, that is too. I understand oh, that. Car is, okay. You're Why talking am about, I? No, no. There, I'm. Oh, I see. Because you should be able to get two about. directly We're behind the building. Back here, right. Part of this is already the property, as I understand. Is that correct? So this, this whole long lot is the liquor store. Okay. So, so what Jerry was wondering, if I understand you correctly, is you want to split this right through here? Yep. And stop here and then cut it off this way. Okay. So right. you would own So this this spot here that people have always parked on is was never part of the property? Not here the city yeah. property. Oh, all right. Okay, because now I had always been told that was part of what uh, no, where we from what I understood years ago, straight back from your building, okay. straight back. So a lot of the alley. There's an alley easement. It's an easement. It's an easement. There never easement. was an alley because yeah. there used to be a building yeah. right here. But that's where that easement. But your property actually is that long line there. Right. So I was wondering if we went 12 and a half feet to the west. How about selling the back part of that? You don't want to well, that's that's that a twenty-five way. foot lot. Also, there should be room for two of them side by right. side, right behind the building. 
right but, here. But yeah. there isn't no. because of that alley. No, the way the alley if you line push, everything there. If you cut this off and push the curb over, you would. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could actually park one up here in the grass too if you wanted yeah. to. I don't know if anybody wants to do that. Would you consider selling the back part of this? That's really of no use to anybody other than me. You mean you only want like well, that where your pencil is this way? That way? Yeah. That gets relatively kind of congested there do. through there during the Labor Day weekend though, Rosemary. I don't know if oh, you I understand that that, that whole, the whole, that whole yeah. thing is congested through yeah. the Labor Day but weekend. But she could at least put a sign up or a rope across or something. Something yeah. so that they have a place to park. Would it not be better for you if you just split that lot? Like, like Jerry said? Here? Because you don't want just the back of it. Well, see, you know, here's where the, this is where the um, patio, patio is. is. But I'm saying split it lengthwise. Yeah. Okay. From alley to patio, whatever. Then you're still running into the patio <clears throat> right here. I'm saying if you go right here, then your then yours is defined and, and where they can park is defined. Okay, so could we do the the property line that would go? Let me go up here. <laughs> if I had a nice little laser thing. <laughs> <laughs> Careful if what you ask for. From this property line went across to right here. That would be so perfect. So it'd be in line. So it'd be a little cleaner as far as maybe an explanation for your thing where wherever this property line is on that parcel right we come across here and go that way that would be perfect it just got to make yeah. the, the legal description a lot more work well it would be a lot more work yeah well i don't to me that seems confusing why you'd only want like the back part because then in the winter time it's like because then right here is where they come off pam and they can park here and here they can just pull right and off they the can alley and push and all the way up here and there's no problem with snow removal or anything <coughs> like that yeah but kemal can't push all the way up there because that's the city's yep so technically he really can't and you need a buffer for your snow yeah you know, so that's why that to me would Because you're saying that's probably like 25 feet, because that's what the lots usually so the width, you did it. The width here line. is 25. Yeah, but if we went from this line, is this to here 25 25, feet? yep. So if you cut this How off. How much of a buffer would she need for parking and snow? How much? Depend on the winter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this winter. No, actually, it depends on the spring in and Minnesota. <laughs> maybe. I would say about. Do we need to have this discussion at a different? I think uh, I think somebody needs to sit down and figure out exactly what they want. Okay. And do More some measuring that. and get some better. And then we can bring it to the. And okay. look oh, at your fine. snow so, removal issues and yeah, your buffer I, I zones. I think we're done with snow. I'm hoping. Well, Pray to God we are. It's not more than July yet. <laughs> I would say, in a, just just estimating, you know, generally with snow, about, you know, if you have a 25 foot lot, I would say 12 and a half feet. You know, figure about half of it. Right. As far as storage of snow, so. so it depends on how many you want to park there. If you want to park one there, 25 is probably enough, but okay. if you park two there, you probably need something bigger. Okay. So can we table this and have sure. Rosemary and... Sure. Table to the next council meeting. She can get us a proposal. Okay. That works. That works for me. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. Okay, we'll have the resolution 2018-22, the ordinance repealing ordinance number 364 and annexing property to the city. I'd make a motion to approve that ordinance. I'll second. First and second, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We have a motion for resolution 2018-23, receiving feasibility report, State Street improvements. Make that motion. First and second, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 
Resolution 2018-24, approving plans and specifications and ordinance EX of change 2017 infrastructure improvement project. <laughs> I'll make that motion, but I'm not repeating it. <laughs> second. First and second, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Um, approval of the Planning Commission minutes for April 2nd. Second. First and second, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Anybody have any unfinished business? No. As far as unfinished business, would redo making that resolution for the fire contracts and all that would be, would that be old? Unfinished business? Unfinished business. Okay. Brings us right along to new business. <laughs> okay. So now oh, let me look here. What we want to make for our what do I do with my fire contract? That is uh, so we want to make yeah. Yeah, it's on there. Page 25. It's a draft. Okay. So I make a motion to approve this ordinance. No, no, no. Except for a public hearing. We set for a public yep. hearing. Okay. We, we have the first meet, reading and set a public hearing. Motion to waive the first reading and set a public hearing for ordinance. Is there a number? No, not yet. And a public for case. emergency fire protection, fire services payment. What is it? I would just say ordinance establishing fees for emergency fire protection fire. services. Well, you see, you got that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. When are you setting it for? You set it for a public hearing. 30 days. 30 days. 30 days. 30 days so. 18th of June. I think June 11th is our. Would we do it on? Less than 30 meeting? days away. The 25th of June. <coughs> so June 25th at 6:45. I'll second that. First and second, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Anybody have any mayor council communication? I do have one thing to bring up. Um, the Tracy Fire Department, the real contract rates per section, um, 447, is that what you guys want to go with for 2019? So we can send a notice out. Is that what our next step up was? The letter yeah. of intent. Yeah, when it goes from 389, which is what they just signed, up to 447. Yeah. Get the letter of intent out, and then we'd want a resolution setting these rates. Is that the consensus? Well, I, I thought the plan was you get the letter out with the change, and then we still have two more steps after that. We do have those last two steps of the resolution while it's still under this council. That way you'll have the information to make the okay. the following letters of intent. Yep. That'll give you a chance to draw up the resolution. I don't know if it actually would need a resolution, just a council action. I mean yeah. if that's if that's the case we could do that under new business for your fire contracts is so, uh, I'd make the motion that you send out your letter of intent at the 447 with the notification that the following years will be stepped at whatever it was we agreed on. Okay. 
Do we have a second? I'll second that. First and second, and I'll need discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Then it's done with. The only other thing I had under Mayor Council, and I'm not sure where it would fall or whose responsibility it would be, but parking semi trailers in the alleys and covering up other people's parking areas. Who's, what's the rules on that? Shane, do you know? It's not really specific to semis. Um, the biggest thing there is the weight. Obviously, that's hard to, unless they have a bill of lading or something where you can cross-reference the weight. But usually, I mean, if it's a grain truck and the tires are squatting, you know it's probably well, overweight for an even the dolly starts sinking into that asphalt when the, when the heat comes. I know I seen that last time I was parked there. It went down a good, a good I know we have one parking behind the building here. That was, it's getting to be, that's why I brought it up, it's getting to be all around in the downtown area and we don't, okay. don't need that. I don't know, like I said, I don't know whose responsibility it is. Well, as far as the traffic code, it's the police, um, probably with my help, as far as which roads are nine ton, which roads are seven, six, five. Some are half I thought it was my understanding that the police got called about that and they were okay with it. I don't know. I'm just... I haven't heard anything on it. Mm -hmm. I just kind of noticed it when... Because I got a call about that today and I know from talking to the people that they talked to their neighbors around there and they were all okay with it being parked there for it got loaded or unloaded or getting taken back out tomorrow or tonight or whenever it was but it's like, and I know that there's a dumpster coming from what I heard because I checked into that I don't know anything about like the nine ton or the whatever kind of tons for that road but most alleys are like three ton yeah. they're not built to take that weight so, but so he can enforce that. Yeah. Okay, but so let me ask you another question though. If they're not made to take that weight, then how can they take the weight of like when people park down a little farther when they're unloading freight? Is it because it's a shorter amount of time, or why is that? There's, I know there's a, a special section on deliveries, and you know, say someone's getting concrete at their house, or there's provisions for delivery vehicles. For delivery and then leaving. But yeah. there's like a set time, I think it's like 90 minutes or two hours, somewhere. it's something like that in the traffic code. I think it's chapter <laughs> 7 of the city code. It's indoors. Could also use maybe zoning regulations too if it's parked overnight. If it's a freight vehicle or something like that as well, this might be a way to address that as well. The other thing I've seen too is semi trailers being used for storage. I've seen a few of those pop up that are kind of hard to enforce too. It's like, you know, are they a vehicle? You know, should they have tabs on them? You know, if an empty storage dry trailer. <clears throat> There's quite a few of those in town. I don't know how hard you guys want to. Well, I didn't see the downtown area be full of them, but. <laughs> I think we need to enforce what we have in place because we are trying to beautify the city and gain people to move here. The last thing we want is if we're trying to work on getting the, the houses and the businesses looking nice is then having a bunch of semis or trailers sitting around yep. town. So whatever codes there are, I think we need to enforce them and we need to go to the chief of police and get him to help enforce those. Okay, but I have a question for you, but, but are you talking about like when you have a semi that's being loaded and unloading that may be there overnight? What loading and unloading would happen overnight, that that truck would sit there all night? Because it had to wait for the next day for the semi driver to come get it. But drop shipping so, is what you're talking about? Well, I mean, well, but I'm talking about this particular place that I got called about today. It's like, supposedly there's the semi was getting loaded and they had to wait for the driver to be able to take it either tonight or tomorrow morning, whenever he could come get it. 
So is that like what you're talking about for that part of it? I guess I was that, looking more longer term if people are like using it for storage, storage. storage. Right. storage. storage. sitting there. Okay. But you still have that ordinance right. about the time limit on, on deliveries and pickups. It's, it's not, I don't believe it's permissible by ordinance to let it sit overnight while they load. They'd have to look at that's that's why I brought it up and and, and asked because I'm like I said I'm not 100 percent sure on the enforcement of responsibilities but yeah. I know it's in there somewhere. They did notice this last snowstorm. There's tracks over the sidewalk too. Well, yep. sidewalk ain't made for semi traffic either. So. Um, other than that, the only other thing is I want to just say anybody that wants to help on cleanup day Saturday. We got a sheet in the office, so we got a reasonable amount of crew. So far, you're kind of thin yet. Nobody. Nobody. That's pretty thin. <laughs> That's very what do you mean, Shane? I always. Do you didn't sign the sheet yet? I didn't sign. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was no news. There's so. a few verbals, but yeah. what are they? Show up and it'll probably rain. So. They know probably. No, he's done last time. <laughs> so. Uh, I can help you. The flower box is across the street. What happened over there with the paper block? PD is that's on his list. He, okay. he took the turn down the approach too oh. hard with the uh, sweepers. <laughs> okay. I, I just curious as to what happened. Now I can, I'm sorry yeah. I asked. We got to glue them back together. There you go. <laughs> Once they dry. Yeah. <laughs> that's what happened there. Yeah. <laughs> Minor in the grand scheme of things, but yep, it's on our list. So I, I'm, I'll be I'll be honest with you. I'm amazed it hasn't happened more often. I just I knew it had to. I just didn't think it'd take that long. <laughs> yeah, it's just one machine. The the back end sticks out a little further than the snow blower. So when you take the turn, you kind of forget what's back there. That'll do her. Yeah. So. Okay. I can help you on Saturday. Yeah. I'm going to add her to the list. So move. <laughs> we have a motion to do adjourn. I'll second. <laughs> First and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Did you need these back shaving?